Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rouse case. Sorry for standing up. I'm just slightly distracted by what I can see in the distance. I can't quite make it out from here, but I can just see some of it moving left and right. It's not quite keeping still. Wait, let me just focus in. Wait, what's that? No, no, it can't be. No, it can't be. Oh no. We're experiencing an eclipse. Wow, it's going to go very dark soon. Oh no, what am I going to do? I don't like it when it gets dark. No, no eclipse. No, I'm going to faint. No. Tyler Feller, please recharge up. Insert your holy liquid and be risen from the grave. I think I might have misunderstood that. Because, as I can kind of make it out now, it wasn't an eclipse after all. It was Indiana pressed up against the window. Indiana. Why? Why? Anyway, there you go. Uh, all kinds of um, unexplainable things do happen, right? So, yeah, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. We are here once again and we're going to be doing an interesting map analysis. We're actually going to be checking out a new location, trying to track down Don Haightley. Credit to Tom Evans for sharing this rough estimated information. As for supposedly the source of it, it dates back to one of Kurt Wadsworth's interviews. Now, understandably to some people, they might think, oh, well, there's no point. But you know what? There is a point. We take a look at the area. We see what it's all about. We do street level. We check possible locations such as motels because you might be staying in one or someone might visit over at some point in time. You look at the fast food places because that could be a hotspot for someone like Don to visit and see for CCTV footage if there's ever any need down the line. And if it turned out to be a load of BS, it's another thing ticked off the list, another loose end tied up. And also it's a good way of putting into practice information from Kurt Wadsworth. Because as you know, my videos, I've done quite a few of them now, right? But how many times have I focused in on Kurt Wadsworth himself? Not too much because I've not had much material regarding him. Okay, interviews, very long, but scattered about as well. You could type in Kurt Wadsworth interview, but how many are still publicly viewable? And how do you know what's relevant to what? Because as you know, titles of YouTube videos are very vague most of the time. Though when you look at my videos, they're not as vague. 
and if you do have a general titled video I make sure to do a singular concentrated future video of a key bit of material found in one of those vague videos so when you type it in on YouTube you'll get what you're typing in for the most part of it does that make sense so today we're putting it into place whether Kurt Wadsworth is correct or not okay see what it's all about as for Candy Schooley that's where I heard it from to begin with not the actual location but the fact that Don H moved so if you want to return back to her and what she said if you want to hear the relevancy of when it occurred when she said it it was in that heavy D interview the last one done which was probably like maybe could you say a month ago now or just under a month ago round about them okay when they're in the grain shed talking and she just basically said don Haley, he's no longer around here he's moved on he's still somewhere in utah but he's moved moved away she didn't really say too much about it at the time kind of interesting before we actually proceed any further uh two important things if you didn't check out my last video if you want to hear the latest exclusive update information breaking news regarding Gorilla Jack if you're a fan a supporter of him okay make sure to check my previous video out as all is revealed the backstory what happened to him and where he is present now make sure to check that video out after watching this okay and what else also if you're in the live chat right now welcome i appreciate it don't worry no more horses will be whipped because i know christy you know was like don't do that look at my famous arb yeah famous arb sorry sorry so yeah okay i'll take that into consideration whilst we go in this video you can share your thoughts opinions and reactions as we talk uh, talk on and talk around things um as well aside from doing the street view just to get like a visual look of the place we can even like measure the distance from the likes of Lucin where Don originally was and then to this new place which is known as Oakley Utah right so we'll see what that's like and we'll take a look at some uh, key places where he could go to and visit now as for Don Haley, first of all you might be wondering so what he's moved why does that matter well let's just do a brief explanation to why there is a level of importance behind it it's the timing right okay it didn't happen immediately when dylan went missing but it still happened um like during this search for dylan right and it makes me think if don Haley was present i'm just skipping ahead okay because i don't want to forget i just want your thoughts down below in the chat okay i'll even do a poll if don Haley was still living in the same place in lucin utah during the time uh, several weeks ago when candice cooley justin mob crew equi search and the k9 unit were out there searching and investigating a wash is there a possibility that someone like don Haley would have joined in or would anything have happened i just want to know your thoughts now, the reason why we're checking out Don's location as well is just because his backstory, it's a little bit dodgy. I'll be honest, I don't know too much about Don, right? Tyler Feller brought bits of information up. Don't know where Tyler got that from. If you have any additional information around Don Haightley, any backstories, any affiliations with anyone, any criminal records... Um, crimes he's got involved with in the past feel free to share it if you're able to and if you want to it might come in handy we might be able to establish links because as you know here and there I have looked at external crime whether it be in Montello, Lucin, Elko County and so on just to see if there is a general pattern of crime which could be associated with possible people going missing because supposedly there's a range of missing people scattered about so if a certain age goes missing and it's under a certain suspicion of crime 
and you've got a range of different criminals that do that crime, then you could associate them and say, are they involved in some kind of organisation group? Is it independent or not? You know, you can determine things at times if you start generalising and tying stuff together, right? And as well, as we've done Haightley, just in case you don't know, I'll just bring it up now. In the past, you know, the, the early days of Dylan going missing. So just, just post Dylan's disappearance, when the grandmother, Karen, okay, grandmother called Karen, ended up calling Jim Brenner and wanting Brenner and Don Haightley. Did she call Jim Brenner or did she call Don Haightley? One or the other and wanted both to go out there and search around, you know, around the farm, the grain shed to try and find Dylan, okay? Why would Karen reach out to those two if they're dodgy? Well, Karen probably isn't going to know the dodgy at the time. And the reason why she reached out to those two is because those two have been introduced to the Rounds family in the past, however it was described by Candice. So the likes of Jim Brenner um, staying at Candice Cooley's in a trailer in the past with Dylan when doing custom farming, if you remember. The likes of Don Haightley, who worked for Dylan before Jim Brenner did, and that dates back to the past with winter 2020, when during a, a farming accident, Don Haightley was looked after by Larry Rounds, the grandfather, right? And obviously Karen, Karen Rounds would have been present because, you know, all living together. So they would have built a relationship back then. Hence why it made sense to, if, you know, Karen was the one post Dylan disappearance to reach out to Don Haightley because they've exchanged numbers. They know each other. There's some kind of level of trust, right? It would be interesting to know right now what the likes of Karen Rounds, Larry Rounds thinks of Don Haightley right now. Do they still trust him? Are they biased? Or do you think there could be a bit of suspicion? I'll do another poll right now, okay? Do you think the grandparents of Dylan Rounds, despite having a relationship, a connection with Don Haightley back in the past, do you think the grandparents have uh, their attitude, has their attitude changed since Dylan going missing? Do you think they're suspicious of Don Haightley or not? Okay, leave that open. Feel free to vote if you wish to, because I think there could be some use behind it, right? Now, the problem is with Jim Brenner and Don Haightley, they know each other and they also know the family. So it's kind of like an internal thing, like a triangular effect. And obviously with someone like Karen contacting someone like Don Haightley to go out and search, it never happened though, as we've heard with, with time. No footprints present. Someone like Jim Brenner, who, you know, didn't bother searching for Dylan, you could say it makes sense. If Jim is responsible for Dylan's disappearance, he's not going to care and try and find him. Because if he tried finding Dylan and was successful, then he incriminates himself even more, right? Um, so it's kind of like delaying, delaying it. Whether he, he knows the inevitable or not, just trying to lay low but then someone like Don Haightley let's just say okay let's just say this if Don Haightley was truly innocent and was not involved in Dylan's disappearance whatsoever why would Don Haightley not bother searching for Dylan similar to Jim Brenner because if both guys are together and supposedly have to meet up you know they live close right they're, on, they're in Lucin land near the grain shed. They've got to meet up and then just walk about. But that didn't happen. Whoever, who would have been called? If it was Don Haightley called, let's just put it on this slant, okay? You can correct the phone call situation down below if you definitely know. I feel like it was Karen that contacted Don Haightley and then Don Haightley and Jim were supposed to get together. 
but I don't know if Karen also called Jim Brenner as well, unless she told Don to pass the message on to Jim. The reason why I say that is under the circumstance, the assumption that Karen contacted Don first and said, Don, can you please look for Dylan? Can you get your friend Brenner as well to help? And if someone like Don did not pass the message on to Jim because Don was involved in some way, then it would explain to why he didn't bother searching, right? But then again, if it wasn't that way around and it was Brenner that was called and Brenner didn't bother passing the message on to Don to search, that lack of communication is probably as a result of they themselves being guilty in some way. If it wasn't that and both were contacted or both got together to say, hey, heard about Karen recently asking us to go searching about. Oh yeah, yeah. Are we gonna search? Nah, let's hang out, let's have a drink somewhere. That's just like um, a scenario of what could have happened. It's basically, whilst the focus has been on Brenner all this time and there's been numerous pieces of evidence of stories not quite adding up, contradictions, lies by Brenner, failing the lie detector test, whatever those questions were, he failed, evidence being found, um, like fingerprints, data, DNA being linked with Brenner and the boots, you know, all that. With time, people have strengthened their suspicion around Brenner. There'll still be some people that might think he's innocent in some way, but the majority do think Brenner is guilty, though I still think someone like Don Haightley there's a side person involved in some way and I think you could tie it in with the whole phone call situation and not actually searching for Dylan and lying. Brenner, Don both had to go out look for Dylan, yet both did not. If one went searching and the other one didn't, then you could say one is innocent over the other, the person who actually went out looking. That wasn't the case. So if they both lied and they both did not go out looking for Dylan, then they must both be responsible. Because really, any normal person who was called to go looking for a missing person, especially that they know the individual themselves, that they have close ties with the family, and that they're literally living on the same land, and they're not exactly busy either, they haven't got too many responsibilities, a normal person would definitely take the offer up and go searching about, even if it was just for like 10 minutes. But not even that level of effort was exerted by Don Haightley. So I would say just from that event back then, it kind of made Don Haightley suspicious, right? Now, is it too soon to do another poll? I'll do another poll now. Apologies if if you didn't answer the other one. You got to speed up, man. We got to fucking speed up. Okay. Right. Actually, I forgot the poll. That's it. That's that's well done by me. Right. Okay. This poll. Do you aside from Brenner, do you think Don Haightley refusing but lying at the same time, going out looking for Dylan? Because Don did not go looking for Dylan when Karen asked him to, like with Brenner, does that make Don suspicious in some way and tied with the disappearance of Dylan? Yes or no? Because I think it does, right? Um, I know you could say, yeah, but you might get other people that are responsible at times for someone going missing and yet they are in the limelight all the way through an investigation. They're always at the forefront. They're always coming out with the questions, the suggestions. They're always aiding and assisting and yet they're the ones responsible in the end. Well, those type of people do that because they're thinking or trying to be a little bit more smarter. You know, if you show emotion and it looks natural, you show a level of care, commitment, right? You appear as a good person, right? You're in favour. So it makes you less likely the suspect. And that's why people do that when they are responsible for someone going missing. Not everyone does that because not everyone thinks. And I think that applies with the Dylan Rounds case. I mean, how many times has it happened 
where a person has not bothered helping, looking for a missing person, and they were innocent at the same time. And I'm not talking about, you know, a stranger going missing and then suddenly you're told to go out looking for that stranger. You know, it's, it's normal if you didn't bother looking for the stranger because there's no attachment, there's no connection, there's nothing. There's no reason to go looking if authorities are stepping in themselves. But, you know, if you know someone, you're friends with someone, or it's family, or you're much closer to someone more than the other, the other connections, then, then you will uh, do what you can to help. But if you don't know the individual, it's like, well, why should I? Now, I know that is also contradicted by the fact you do get, obviously, people on YouTube searching for these missing people, but there's different factors for that, either because it's their job, whether it's because they're a YouTuber, they're a, some kind of search and rescuer or something, and that's like um, a job of theirs in some way, or they have a strong connection with that missing person. Those are things that can drive people in terms of looking. Or it could even be proximity as well. You know, you might get certain people within this case um, with a deeper motive. You know, you've got someone like Lance, you've got someone like Ty. They didn't know Dylan at the time. As we've heard, they didn't know who he was. They might have seen him, glanced across him when he was in one of the streets of Montello, but that was about it. So why would they care so much into in terms of finding Dylan? It's because, you know, as I said, community, you know, help one another out. So they're influenced by that. That's what drives them to do that. If they've been helped themselves by other people in the past, then they're almost like giving back in some way. Now, that can be strengthened, reinforced by the fact Montello, small population, close-knit, people know each other better and help one another better, possibly. I mean, that's why it's been demonstrated. You could say, yeah, but that's Lucen, this is Montello, Nevada, different places. You've got the border in between. But, you know, if people keep coming, visiting over more from one than the other because no one really goes to Lucen and Dylan's got his presence there. And it's still kind of local between Montello and loosen because this is the other thing when you look at those news reports about well, although uh, you get the desert area and it's kind of sparse and you got these towns because they're so small they will branch out to other towns nearby and stuff because there's not much else going on so th there can still be connections formed so that's one of the things that drove Thailand to help as well I think maybe uh, Thai Corbin on a deeper level due to past experience with people going missing so that's what would encourage those sort of people who don't know an individual but still go looking for him, okay? So there are there are different possibilities. But I think if we just put all that aside and we just focus in on the fact you've got Jim Brenner and Don Haitley who know one another, who know the family, who know Dylan, who've worked for Dylan, who have developed some kind of connection in some way. Jim Brenner working with Dylan, custom farming in the past, close proximity, no one getting hurt or killed back then. So there was a level of neutrality in a way. And then the same with Don Haitley and Dylan Rounds working with one another, getting on for the most part of it. There was a disagreement, but it was the kind of walked away on neutral terms, how it was described by Candice Cooley. If you want to contest that thought, you can if you wish to. But I do feel um, that... That was six weeks, six weeks before Dylan going missing. Um, if it was a work dispute, it probably would have been more on the spot. If we're tying in the factor of a snap mentality where someone snaps on the spot, that applies more to Brenner rather than Don, unless Don does snap as well. But we don't know his past criminal history until we find out his past criminal history and determine what that is. If it has any links or similarities to the types of crimes and descriptions by victims as by Brenner's records, then you could say both snap and both could have been responsible. But I'd say Brenner more because uh, over a work dispute, right? There's that shooting in the past in Maryland, so that would tie in there. But the fact that you've got someone like Don Haley who seems to get on better with Dylan rather than Jim Brenner, you could say, arguably speaking, then Don should, you know, put more effort in when Dylan has gone missing. You could be in danger, but there's a lack of care from Don Haitley. And that's where it makes me think. And that moment of uh, um, like disobeying Karen's uh, wishes to look for Dylan, that's probably where it started. 
where it started making Don look a bit dodgy, dodgy Don, right? Um, and then the next part, what I would say is, is the whole lies. Now, there's a big contrast, lying at the start and then passing the lie detector test at a later date. With Jim Brenner, it's been lies, lies, and then the lie detector test, lies. So he's been more consistent, more consistent at being the suspect. Don Haightley has been up and down, and I think that's why people are a little bit confused. Some, I think most people are just suspicious or wary of Don Haightley, but people aren't going as hard in with Don as they are with Jim, and that can be explained by behaviour. Um, what we'll do, we'll work backwards, okay? So with the lie detector test, whenever that was conducted, which is probably months ago now, Jim Brenner did his, along with some other individuals, I did mention them in the past, okay, so we don't need to go over it too much. Jim failed, okay, kind of interesting. Don Haightley ended up passing. It makes you think, why? I think Chase Fenstra also lied though he's got an alibi. This is what I mean, this is where it gets a bit dodgy. You got someone like Chase Venstra who lied or something in the lie detector test, though he has a motive when Dylan went missing on the day of the 28th, so you could say that excuses him. But then you got Don Haightley who passed the lie detector test, which would mean, oh, that's a good thing, right? But he made lies up at the start and acted a bit suspicious regarding Dylan going missing. So, you could say the easiest person to blame is Jim Brenner because he's consistently lying all the way through. Consistently shifty, dodgy behaviour. But someone like Don, someone like Chase Fenstra is innocent, not, innocent, not, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. It's a little bit uh, obscure, right? You could even say the same for like Kurt Wadsworth. Kurt Wadsworth is a bit drunk, a bit reckless, all over the place. He says this and he says that. What can you believe what he says? Is he truly suspicious or not? Is he kind of in, the, in between? So those type of people, where there's a lack of consistency and patterns, it makes it harder to observe those people, right? Um, it takes more time, okay? But if we're applying it back to Don Haightley and the lie detector test, Isolate everyone else, even um, Jim Brenner for this, this moment in time, okay? Who knows what the questions were? Who knows if any of that will ever be revealed? Can I do a poll? Fuck it. Fuck me. Fuck me. I'll do a poll right now, okay? Too many. Christy, hope you're keeping up. You better be. The Penguin won't be happy if you're not. So, as for a poll, do you think the results, the actual questions... The actual questions of the lie detector test, do you think they'll ever be revealed publicly? And also the responses by the suspects when they're being questioned and interrogated. Do you think that data, that information will ever be revealed publicly or not? Yes or no? Vote now. Because it's still a mystery in itself. If we could take a look at it, we'd probably be able to pick up on yet more things, right? We can't vote at this moment in time. So, plan it back to uh, Don Haightley, light, uh, passing, right? Who knows what the questions were? He passed. Oh, that's great, isn't it? People have thrown in the factors here and there saying lie detector tests aren't accurate. It's to do with like levels of nerves. If you're a bit shaky, um, anxiety, that can impact the results. And you know, innocent people can be nervous at times and then it makes them look more suspicious. So there is a concentrated focus on them and then it makes the individual even more nervous because of that and it just gets worse and worse. It's kind of similar with if you just so happen to laugh at the wrong time and someone said, what are you hiding? And you carried on laughing thinking, I'm not doing anything. I've not done anything wrong. And they keep pushing it saying, come on, come on, tell me. You can tell me. And they just keep laughing thinking, oh no. This is what I mean. Sometimes you display the wrong reaction at the wrong time in an innocent way, not on purpose, and then you end up digging yourself into a hole. 
the best comparison, the best application would be Warlike Ref when he tries to say something in the chat where it ends up sounding very dodgy than it should have been, right? And there's many, many examples of that. And there'll probably be some today in this video too, I'm sure of it, right? So, yeah, there you go. Don Haitley, how did he actually appear in those, uh, the lie detector? Was he sweating? Was he calm? How was it? He must have been somewhat calm for him to pass the test, right? Or if he was truly innocent to pass the test, right? And, you know, if people didn't know too much about Don Haitley at the beginning of the case, they probably would have thought, oh, well, there's not too much to look at, right? Don, he's passed his test. He's done what needed to be done. There you go, the end. But obviously, when you look at the, the beginning, as I described just before, a bit dodgy, and then you look kind of in between that, still towards the start, and this is where the lies start coming out. And I have said this once or twice now, but I'm going to say it again because it's still important and it ties in with this video. Towards the start, Don Haitley questioned by police, like with Brenner, about, you know, any tips, directions, locations, possibilities of where Dylan is at. Don Haitley said, oh yeah, over that way in the mountains, Pilot Peak of all places. Pilot Peak, the altitude, the time it takes, about four hours to get up there. And that's what police had to do, because supposedly there was rubbish up there and Dylan might have been scattered in some way or buried. Dylan was not up there. They did search. They came back and had a go at Don Haitley. Don Haitley was also supposedly known to give off a few other false directions in between. And the police weren't too happy with that. If someone is truly innocent, then why would you come out with false information like that? and on several occasions. If it was just one simple mistake, then you could say, oh, it's, it's easy to happen, you know. If you truly didn't know, you had no clue where Dylan could be, then you just simply say, I'm sorry, I don't know, right? I, I don't know, because if you don't know, you don't know, right? If you start trying to make sense of something without actually knowing, so you just make it up, it's unnatural, it's a wild goose chase, and it would probably lead to nowhere. And if it leads to police time wastage, then it's going to annoy the police, right? But it makes you think, why did the police not arrest Don Haitley in some way for like, oh, why did you do this? You know, why did you uh, try and waste police time? Are you, are you involved in it? Or maybe not arrest, but like a certain period of time where the police focused and spent time just observing uh, Don Haitley for a bit just to say, hmm. You see, giving off information like that, it could be a little bit suspicious, right? Let's take a look. Though, with it being the L.E. Box Elder County, you can't expect too much from them, right? They seem to half-heart it within the Dylan Brown's case, so it probably wouldn't have led to anything. Um, I guess the only other thing, which I'll just throw in now, right? Because it's not too redone, it's to do with Chase Venstra, right? Like I was saying, someone like Chase Venstra. Innocent but they're not. Innocent, but they're not. You remember, okay? Lying in the lie detector test, but having an alibi on the day Dylan went missing, right? And yet, despite all that, and what I don't understand, for our, what Candice Cooley said, relaying from what the L.E. Buxelder County, Buxelder County said, Buxelder County said, that Chase Fenstra was never a part of the investigation of Dylan going missing. He was still arrested, but that was to do on unrelated charges, to do with gun charges or gun charge, right? Chase Fenstra. That's understandable. It's like with Jim Brenner, right? Same outcome. Question I have, where is Chase Fenstra being held at? Is it the same place as Jim Brenner? Hmm. Does anyone know? Does anyone know where um, Chase Venstra is being held at? Is he in jail or is he in prison? Has he already had his court case or is there another one coming up? Just randomly thought that on the spot. If anyone knows, make sure to leave a reply down below because we need to 
look at that as well. It'd be a bit weird if they're in the same place, right? Now, what you could excuse is, okay, Chase Venstra might have an alibi on the day Dylan went missing. Let's just say that makes him innocent. Just, just saying, okay. And maybe that lie detector test when he failed it, maybe that can be excused as well because if that was more to do with the gun charges and one of the questions in the test was, Chase Venstra, did you have guns on you when you shouldn't have at this moment in time? And he said, no. Nope. And they said, and it came back as a lie, then that would excuse that. Maybe the whole lie detector test around Chase Venstra was just to do with the gun charges. But as I said, we only know so much about the lie detector test, right? If it was the same person conducting the lie detector test, like what they did with Avales, like what they did with Jim Brenner there and Don Haitley, right? Then you'd probably think, well, the same with Chase Fenster, because all the others that took part and participated, that was to do with Dylan, the lie detector test. Right, so you probably could just indirectly associate it with Chase Venture as well. I'm just coming up with possibilities to either rule out things to excuse people or or it just uh, strengthens it once again, right? But yeah, I think that explains that with Don Haitley at least in terms of the backstory around him and the suspicion and the motive for why I would be suspicious of someone like Don, you know. Sure, you can know dodgy people that are criminals or have done bad things or are currently doing bad things. Don't mean to say you're a bad person as well, right? But in this case, when you see the actions and behaviour of Don Haitley, you know, it makes you think. With Don Haitley moving away, which is obviously the critical part of this video, and moving elsewhere within Utah, that does make you think, is he moving away because he's trying to escape? because of all the searches going on and Candice Cooley's present as well as Justin Rounds. Does it make Don Haley feel a bit uncomfortable? Um, one thing to highlight, and I think it's in a certain order as well, right? I think Don Haley moved away from Lucent before Justin Rounds had his meltdown, okay? You remember that one? Because, as we saw on that Facebook page, temporarily, Justin Rounds at the time was angry with Don Haitley. You remember that? Um, if you're not, I can't narrate... Well, can I narrate over the screenshot? Hmm. Yes. For reference, let's travel back in time to Justin Rounds' post in response to Don Haitley. And this occurred, which I wasn't aware of fully at the time, but this occurred um, after Don Haitley moved away. And it would make more sense now, because due to the outburst of Justin Rounds, if Don Haitley was present in Lucent near the grain shed, well, not directly near, but you know, within a few miles, then when Justin and Candice were out there at that time, when Justin took that photo at the same time as having that meltdown and posted that thread and all the comments as well, calling Don out, come here, come here now. He wouldn't have done that on social media online. He would have literally, if they're on in the area, they would know where Don is at. And Justin probably would have gone to the trailer, knocked on and said, hey, get out here now. But obviously if Don H isn't there, which he wasn't, and he moved elsewhere, which Justin and Candice didn't know where he was. That's why Justin did a public Facebook announcement. Does that make sense now to why it was all public? Because, you know, if you don't know where someone is at, you probably will post online in hopes that they're monitoring. If you knew where they lived, and it was actually on site of where the search took place, you wouldn't need to do a Facebook post. You'd just go to the trailer and have, have it out with them there. But... That didn't happen. So that explains the actual backstory of that, okay? It makes sense, right? If you have any additional information or for whatever reason you've got a counterpoint, feel free to add that in. So let's head on over to just to look back at what Justin had to say to do with Don Haley, just to just see 
why would Justin be like that? There'd be no reason if the person was innocent, right? Okay, so here we are. You see Justin Round's post. Bear in mind, they're no longer present. They were taken down by Justin for good reason. Obviously, it makes sense. But that moment in time when he acted out, there must have been something for him to be like that. Because you think about it, all of those months beforehand are trying to look for Dylan... Uh, feeling somewhat confident that Jim Brenner is the guy responsible, but mainly trying to recover Dylan for the actual case and justice for Dylan and the family. But then just to suddenly snap in direction to Don all of a sudden. You know, you've seen how Justin has been in previous interviews, right? And then here, he changed. Now, is it just suddenly heat of the moment, or was there... A trigger. What was the trigger? A few people have said in recent time, I think it was Tom Evans as well, that Justin must have discovered something for him to act this way, right? What could it have been? A bit of evidence which tied to Don Haightley? I mean, if that truly was the case, then are the Rounds family trying to look for Don Haightley right now or not? Because... It just doesn't make sense to suddenly start going after someone. I mean, you look at Candice Cooley, she can be quite verbal at times, and sometimes she might raise her voice or she might get a bit pissed off, um, swear a little bit, but there's a reason behind that, such as because of her negative ordeal with the LE. There's a reason to why she's annoyed and frustrated, right? And then supposedly how she thinks with... Lance and Ty with the bag of bones that annoyed her. There's a reason why something happened which triggered that reaction. But what triggered Justin? Finding a piece of evidence, Don Haightley phoning up Justin, some confrontation from the past, a grudge coming back into one's memory. What are your thoughts? I'll do another poll right now. Uh, the poll can be, when Justin called out Don Haightley at this moment in time, which would have been a couple of, couple, um, like a month, uh, you know, how long ago was it now? Like, so many weeks ago, okay, so many weeks ago, during that search for Dylan, of the wash, and then Justin posted a photo around that time, on, on like the final day, and then calls out Dom. The poll can be, as you've witnessed that, do you think there have there has been evidence found by Justin? Information told, talked about, explained towards Justin, and then that's what caused him to act out. Or do you think Justin just had like a heat of the moment and there was no other reason for him to call out Don? You decide, right, in the, the poll. So, <laughs> we've not even read the actual text out, but you would have read it out yourself on screen whilst I've been narrating over all this. Justin did say, Jim Brenner and Don Haightley are dead men walking. They don't even know it yet. We all will meet God, but they will first, I promise. And then talking about some other references as well in the comments. Um... At first, you could have seen this as a threat, but other people would interpret it more as the death penalty because in Utah, the death penalty is still there. So that's probably what Justin was referring to. But, you know, if Jim Brenner is the main suspect and for Justin to name Don in the same words as Jim, then there must be some kind of association, right? Move on. Some of the comments, Justin saying, let's drain the main line, Donald, you stupid fat fuck. Now, a bit of insults being thrown about, okay. The drain, main line, is that to do with the pivot? The ground itself, okay. Meeting place, possibly. I know people did explain it, but I can't remember. That's all. And he also says, bring all your family, even your gay son, now, some people in recent time have 
reinforced it with uh, the whole Jim Terry situation with Dylan being gay, saying that oh well if this is how uh, if this is how Justin Rounds acts, how he um, not coming from my words, but from what other people have said, other people saying well if Justin discriminates other people and then calls other people's sons out because they're gay, then most likely Justin was less accepting of Dylan Rounds with Dylan coming out as gay, but Candice Cooley was more accepting. That's what people have said in recent time, right? And, you know, some people will still say, so why does that matter? Even if it was true, even if Dylan was gay and the father, Justin, didn't approve of Dylan being gay, but the mother did, does that really matter? Well, in people's minds, tying in with religion and certain areas and communities, people will associate it all one together and say, well, maybe Dylan was taken out because of him being gay and it was seen as a bad thing within the area or on part of the family. So that's why it was done. If that really was the case, then I don't think like the grandparents would have bothered giving Dylan that opportunity to start farming in the area. Um, if Justin had a problem, then most likely Justin wouldn't have invited Dylan back to their place at times, right? Unless it came out after that. I don't know at what point, though. Like, does Justin know about Kurt Wadsworth and Dylan hanging out? What does Justin think about supposedly Kurt Wadsworth grooming Dylan Rounds? You know, what's his thoughts on that? I, I, I don't know, but, you know, I would say that there's a possibility you can interpret it just due to how Justin responds back. But, is the thing. There's times where you might be friends with someone, or closer than that, or just family members. And nine times out of ten... They like you, they'll say positive stuff, etc. You reciprocate. And then that one time out of ten, when they end up acting up, saying something negative which applies to you but isn't directed towards you, then it makes you question. And can I give an example on the spot, right? I'll give an example on the spot to try and explain what I mean by the whole fact of certain people out there assuming that because Justin called uh, Don's gay son out, then that's probably why Justin isn't as accepting with Dylan if Dylan's gay as well, okay? Despite being positive to Dylan most of the time. So, here's an example. You've got person A and person B. Person A is a quiet individual, they don't do much, they don't have much, they don't say much, they don't cause any trouble or any harm, but they're in the presence of other people, like a crowd, and that crowd are positive towards person A. You know, they might get on well, or get on in a neutral way. That's normal, right? But then you've got person B. Person B is negative, hateful, toxic, they do or say something towards the crowd, the audience, what happens? Well, whether it be online or in real life, the crowd and audience responds back and bites, saying negative stuff back, which is the usual. An insult line, uh, like a reality check, whatever it may be. So, if person B says... Oh, look at all you lot. You're pathetic. Oh, yeah, look at you. Uh, all negative. The crowd will respond back saying, oh, yeah, and because you're so negative and toxic, no wonder why you have no life. No wonder why you have no connections with people, why no one wants anything to do with you. You're just sad. You're pathetic. You have no life. They're the default lines what the crowd and audience would say. But just imagine if person A was in the presence of that commotion and it just so happened that person A 
Despite being a good person, despite not receiving any resistance or insults, shared certain characteristics and similarities, life situations, let's say, as person B, supposedly speaking. So like person A had nothing, no one, they haven't done this, they haven't got much of a life. You know, if they're in the presence of that crowd... And that crowd who nine times out of ten are positive towards person A and yet person A witnesses what the crowd has to say towards somebody else. It's like, well, if person A is similar to person B, then all the insults aimed at person B should be said to person A as well. But it's not. So then that must mean that the crowd, the audience, are lying and two-faced. You call that person out, but you won't call the other individual out. And the only reason why they don't is because the other individual, person A, isn't causing or triggering a negative reaction because they're keeping to themselves, they're being positive, they're being nice and being good. So obviously it doesn't warrant a negative wave of resistance back, which is a level of respect and it's positive. But what it highlights is that crowd and audience are basically two-faced liars. You know, if you're going to say it to that person, you might as well say it to the other person as well, because they've got similar characteristics. Does that make sense? I'll try and summarise it one more time. One person is positive, the other person is not. Both share similar characteristics and those characteristics are highlighted as an insult towards them by the crowd. But only one person receives those insults because they said or did something negative and bad in the first place to warrant a reaction. The other person in the presence, witnessing and hearing it all, makes themselves think, huh, well I'm pathetic, I've got no life, I'm the same as them, but why aren't the crowd saying it to me as well? Is it because they're lying? Are they being two-faced? Huh. No, it's just because you've not done anything bad yourself, so they're not going to say what they truly think. And this is why I always say it's better to be hated because people will tell you what's on their mind and exactly how they see you. Even if it's negative, even if it's not that nice and it's kind of hurtful, at least you know where everyone stands. It's where it gets worse when people like or are positive towards you and then down the line the snap and it's it's more abrupt it's more you know impactful so that is just a very small example i wanted to demonstrate to you because i've thought of that example for so many years but i've never been able to put it into words until now so there you go anyway we look back at these photos screenshots Bring all your family. Why would you need to bring all your family? Right? If this, let's just say this was to do with Justin referring to the death penalty, right? If it's to do with the death penalty, then supposedly Don Haitley would be imprisoned on death row. So how could Don Haitley bring his family to watch it happen? The family would not visit. Don wouldn't ask that to happen. Unless this is still all to do with actually meeting up in real life on some land so they can talk it out, expose Don in front of his family. Yeah? Because if Don has some kind of family in some way, maybe the family doesn't know what Don is capable of. So, you know, try and public e publicly expose him on the spot. But yeah, you can see with, with the insults, this level of lack of control something must have caused Justin to suddenly you know jump out like this because he's not really done it before publicly right and the only reason why on this occasion it most likely was publicly is because where's Don Haitley well we don't know the family doesn't know so just do a public call out in hopes either Don or someone that knows Don hears about it you know what I'm saying because I'm sure if Don Haitley was in Lucin, where he normally was staying at, at the time when this happened, this whole search, like I mentioned about this poll at the beginning, would Don join in with this search going on with the K9 unit, Candice Cooley, Mob, Chris Crew, Justin and uh, Equa Search, then probably Justin would have had it out with Don on the spot without publicly posting it on Facebook. So that, that does explain that. It makes more sense. Do we have another shot? Final one. 
Justin said, stoop at what level? I'll go to the lowest of the low if that's where I have to. So that just basically means if justice can't be ser served other ways, then he'll make sure it happens in other ways, I guess. So once again, it's probably not truly meant Justin just had a heat of the moment situation, but something must have triggered it, right? To level this, this level of response by him because it's kind of out of the ordinary, right? Okay, we don't know Justin in real life. We don't know what he's like all the time. This might just miss, this might happen here and there, but if you're not used to seeing a certain behavior from someone and it just suddenly changes, it, it can be abrupt. Like you could be in the presence of someone. It's all fine. It's nice. It's fun messing around, whatever it may be. But then suddenly they might turn very snappy in a negative way. They might suddenly start interrogating you all of a sudden. They might suddenly start making lots of assumptions with you and saying, you're this, you're that, or why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you here? Why are you with them? And it's like, oh, it's that abruptness, that sharpness. You're not prepared for it. You're not used to seeing it. You don't know when it's going to happen. So there's no like pattern. And that's, that's uh, I guess, what the problem is. But if anyone knows Justin in real life, they'll know what he's really like in, in a positive way, I'm sure. So yeah, I just wanted to refer back to this just so you know. So hopefully that made sense to you, the backstory, the reasoning behind why Don Haley is a suspect potentially in the Dylan Browns case, that their behaviour doesn't quite add up, that them almost like running away and then Justin calling him out when he has ran away, it does make you think, doesn't it? It could even be a possibility that maybe Justin was triggered by the fact that Don was no longer present in the area, so it felt like an act of cowardness, right? You know, why run away? Why not stay put and help look for Dylan? Oh, wait, you didn't even try looking for Dylan at the start, so no wonder why you moved. So there's different ways of interpreting it. One, very suspicious, moving away. Or two, he just moved away because no one else was present. We can do another poll right now, okay? Before we actually transition on. Don't worry. Don't worry. We are going on the map. We are trying to track down Don Haley. We're going to the location suggested by Tom Evans, which was passed on from Kurt Wadsworth. So we are going to take a look and we're going to see what it's all about, what the area looks like. Don't worry. We will get to it, okay? But first, I should do a poll, okay? What do you think? Do you think with Don Haightley moving out of Lucent and going somewhere else in Utah, is that suspicious or not, right? I've explained, given my reasonings beforehand, so you can make your judgment now in the poll. Make sure to vote, okay? Now... Before we proceed any further, just need to hand out a few little gifts. Mm -hmm. So Christmas has come early. Santa's little helper is here. Okay. Why is the camera so high up? I don't fucking know. It's just spazzing out. So there you go. Is it wall light, Raph? I don't know. It's Santa's little helper. All in red. Yeah. You like that? I've even got antlers as well. Now, where's my ball? I've only got one ball. Hmm, there you go. There's the ball. Do I look innocent to you? I hope I do. You know, would I do anything wrong or anything bad to you? Hmm? Would I ever cause any trouble? What do you think? Hmm? Anyway, so with that in mind, oh my God, it really lights up as well. That's amazing. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Look at that. It's so colorful. It's almost like a rainbow. Yes, Cleo. It's time to get the rainbow emoji out. Come on, everyone. Show some support. Rainbow? Just simply a rainbow, nothing more, nothing less, okay? I'll turn it off for now because we don't want to get any electrical shocks, you know? We don't want any electricity passing through, you know? 
Maria might be entertained, but this is not Ted Bundy's execution, okay? That ain't going to be happening today. So Santa's little helper has a little gift, and it comes in a black leather piece of material, okay? Are people ready for the whippings? Hmm? Who is it this time? Well, there's a couple of names. There's a couple. So, first of all, I guess the first individual that shall be whipped is Anushka. Who is Anushka? Well, Anushka showed up in the last live video premiere with her cat emoji, okay? And she basically said she wants to be whipped. It was more of a, <laughs> um, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. But, or it could have been more like a, or oh, you can whip me any day you want to. It really doesn't matter. Anything will do for you, Drew. Whichever way it was, you're getting the whip. Okay. I don't know what method you prefer, what technique, but I'm sure improvisation is more than enough. Yes, the recommendation was to talk in this voice when doing it. I wonder why. Maybe the last video catched on with that narration. Are you ready? Are you in position, Anoushka? Good. One, two. Oh, yes. That seemed to work just fine. Again, are you ready? Whoa, did you see that recoil bouncing off your body? Impressive. Again, are you ready to feel the cold leather slap against the flesh? Hmm? Good. Yes. And a couple more for good behaviour. Yeah, you like that? Good. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. What's going on? This whipping has unleashed this bound. Oh, my God. I didn't know it could get that long. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, my God. This is very long now. It won't even fit into frame. Anoshka, what have you done to this bow? Fucking in half, man. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? This, this? this ain't looking good, man. I have to reattach it. My God, I can't believe I've had to get to this level, man. Fuck. Santa's little help has turned into Dr. Warlike Graf. Don't worry. I'm here at your service. I need to perform a very careful, dangerous procedure of attaching this belt. Lives need to be saved. Because if we dilly-dally too long... This belt may pass away. We do not want that to happen. So I must quickly, on the spot, perform intensive key medical surgery. If Bella V was here, maybe she could treat the belt, but she ain't. So I'll do it myself. Come on, man. You're going to pull through. You're going you're gonna to live another day, man. Don't worry. I've nearly got it. I've just got to pop this right through the hole. Yeah, I'm just going to pop it on through. Yeah. Oh. You're playing with me. Stop Stop being so naughty. There we go. Just got to pop it through this little tight little hole. Come on, man. I can see you popping in. Come on, pop in. Yeah, get through that hole. Come on. Come on, get through that hole. Get through that tight little hole, man. Yeah. It's going to widen once it's plowed all the way through. Yeah. Come on. Stop forcing your way out. Stop slipping out of that hole. Get in that hole, that tight hole. Come on. There we go. So it's penetrated through. I just need to make sure I secure it into place so it does not run away or escape. Oh my God, what's happened here? Oh, fuck. I've done it through the wrong hole. I've done it the wrong way. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to go in that hole. Oh, shit. No, it, it wasn't supposed to go in that hole. I, I put the thing in the wrong hole. That's not going to sit too well, is it? Oh my god, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know how to buckle about. Fuck. Who the hell am I? Do I not even know what I'm doing? Probably not. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm keeping it off camera. Apologies. There we go. Yeah. Send some blessings right now. We have fixed the belt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to see this hand? Yeah? You like the hand on your face? Hmm? Does it feel smooth and soft? Or rough? Hmm? Maria, are you still there? Hmm? Something tells me you're not. Anyway, here we go. Sorry about that interruption. Very, very unfortunate. So the final person that needs to be whipped is... Hmm. Gorilla Jack. <laughs> Calm down, Gorilla Jack. <laughs> I'm Gorilla Jack. I want to be whipped today. Okay, don't worry. Are you ready? Are you ready, Gorilla Jack? We're going to do an underarm one for extra performance. One, two, rapid action once again. Three. Come on, boy. Keep it up, boy. How long can you go? Oh, my God. You're going to break the, the sound of light. You're going to break the speed barrier, man. Keep on going. How hard can you take it, man? How fast? How long? You're going to go weak. You're going to fall over. You're going to misbehave. Oh, my God. Just imagine what people are thinking next door, hearing all this slapping sound. They're going to be deeply disturbed, man, because it's ongoing, nonstop action. Come on, boy. Wow. I think that's the longest whip session yet. We are breaking records every single day. Mm -hmm. Forget about Guinness... Guinness World Records, it's WLW Records. WLW, World's Strongest Man. Yeah! Okay. So I think that concludes that. I think we need to go onto the maps and infiltrate Don Haitley. Don't you think? Let's return back to Dylan Rounds. Here we are, back on the maps. You may wonder, what are we doing in Uganda? Well, you'd have to check my previous video out to find out. Mm -hmm. You can do so after this video. Though, what we're looking at, obviously, is Utah. 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 Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Utah. Oakley. Does it come up yet? There we go. Click on this. Let's see where it's located at. We've got some default photos as well to take a look at. Let's just close that down for a second, if it will let me. Good boy. We zoom out. There you go. Should be familiar with the area. You see the lake right in the middle of the screen. To the right of it, you've got Ogden, below that Salt Lake City. On the left-hand side, where it's more of the desert, white-coloured area, you've got West Wendover. Just a bit above it, you've got Lucid. And then further to the left, across the border, you've got Montello. It's not marked when zoomed out to this extent, but you can kind of see it's... Although there's still a fair bit of mileage to cover from place to place, it's not that extreme. Is it unusual for a person to move about to a new location which is still, you know, within reach? It's normal. It's a normal thing. You know, if, if you're familiar with the area, you like the area, you know, or... Uh, you've you got friends, family, yeah, it makes sense not to get go too far, but then other people are different. But I just wanted to show you that way it looks like, putting it into perspective when you zoom out, okay? Um, I think before we start analysing Oakley really deep, we should do a distance check, right? We'll just zoom in here, just so you see. So you've got Salt Lake City there, and then you've got Oakley over this way. Now... You know, this is the thing. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's practical, but I'm going to say it anyway. And I might even highlight it to pancakes, right? So you've seen Salty Pancakes. He gets about, right? Does whatever. Does his own videos within the case of Dylan, whether people agree with it or not. Kurt, uh, not Kurt. Uh, Salty has also done interviews with the likes of Kurt Wadsworth. Also going down to Montello for the interview. Now... Is it possible for Salty Pancakes to go down to Oakley and possibly try and find where Don Haitley is? Is that a good idea or is that a very bad idea? 
Let me know your thoughts. If Salty Pancakes is watching, or if there is a viewer or follower of Salty Pancakes who's watching my video right now, feel free to pass on the message. Is it worth investigating Don Haightley in Oakley to try and find him and question him? You know, just spread the message if you think it's worthwhile. You see the red outline, this is just basically where it's officially called Oakley. You look at it, a bit more hilly in the mountainous range, as you would have seen when we were in Salt Lake City on ground level, and you saw the mountains in the background. That's kind of like what we're looking at here, looking down, aerial view. A bit more greenery. Uh, I don't know if you'd still call it a desert, maybe. But yeah, it, it does look quieter. Um, don't know about the population. I said, if it is further confirmed, further reinforced with time, we can definitely take a look at Oakley a lot closer, right? No harm in doing that. Um, also, with time constraints, because uh, time's getting on, uh, we will take a look at Oakley, we'll check the distance out. As for the key individual locations, maybe I can save that for the uh, next video because um, it is getting very late. And I've got to take in mind the uploading, processing and live video premiere deadline by tonight. So I'll do the best I can. Okay. Um, should we... Where's the actual road, though? I wanted to do a distance check. Okay. We'll do a distance check from Oakley to uh, Lucin. Okay. I'll do the best I can in terms of going on the right route. Can I zoom out if that's okay? Something like that. Road onto there. Like that. And then I assume quickest way. Probably there, because you got to go around the bends of the mountain and go down this winding thing. Bear in mind, this is just very rough. Okay. Um, somewhere like that. To there. To there. I think this is the way Don Haightley would have gone. Not up the other way to Park Valley and... Um, Snowville, not that way. Chase Venstra may have done, well, he did, on the 28th, CCTV caught him up that way. I think Don Haley may have gone the back road. Because once you get on this highway, the 80 highway, which is a quite a stretch, goes across the Salt Lake, goes into Wendover, crosses the border into West Wendover, Nevada, and then, let me just zoom out so I'm familiar. Eventually coming off, because it does branch off. Um, yeah. And then you can't, can, can we zoom in? Mm. Somewhere there. Because you've got the thin dirt road which goes round parallel to the adjacent to the mountainous border of Pilot Peak, Bald Eagle Mountain, and the lake by the side, on the right-hand side. Apologies it's taking long, I just want to kind of make it accurate, okay? And then, this is the thing. I don't know where Don Haightley originally lived, okay? Somewhere within Luton. Um... So I'll just randomly place the marker somewhere like there, okay? Or it could be over here, right? I'm not too sure exactly. But let's just round it up. Round up to like 215 miles, let's just say. 215 miles Don Haightley has moved. He's covered 215 miles. He's 215 miles away from Lucent, okay? Fair bit of distance. I Can you get 215 miles done in a day? Is that possible? If you wake up early and set out, 
Is that possible? Or do you have to stay the night at a motel, hotel, and then continue the journey the next day? The only reason why I say that is because like Indiana pointed out that Salty Pancakes is in the process of uh, visiting Montello. You may have seen his recent live stream of him setting out there on the road, and he's also narrating as well. But I don't know if it's pre-recorded footage or not, and then live streaming it in some way. No, that would be a video premiere then, wouldn't it? Hmm. I don't know. The only reason why I say that is because when you hear Salty Pancakes talking, you don't hear the background sound like if you was on a road or like on a bumpy road. You don't really hear that background sound unless it's noise cancelling or something. I'm not too sure. But yeah, supposedly going down to Montello. But he, I'm sure he was saying something about he had to stay the night somewhere and he had to get some gas as well. And there was another bit of live stream footage of him driving in the dark. So I don't know if it was all done in one day or not. Can anyone confirm that or was it over a stretch? It will be helpful that because then we can understand. Okay. Now, this is the thing what you got what what you got to realize. Don Haitley left his RV trailer in Lucent and you saw it in Lance's video, right? Um do I have the clip? Well, I could, but then there's copyright music on it and it'll get too messy. But basically, if you go back on uh, my video, or you, even if you go on Lance's... I know, because Lance didn't title it specifically, did he? No, he didn't. Um, But, whether you go on Lance's video, which is titled something like Going to Loose in Governor's Spring, if he titled it that. If not, go on my channel, watch my video where it says Don Haitley's trailer location revealed okay and then i show a screenshot of what the trailer looks like it's blurry because it's from a distance but you get the idea that he left it behind now do people normally leave their trailers behind when they move elsewhere i guess it depends right like are they moving to another trailer park are they moving into a motel hotel or an actual house a flat some kind of apartment i don't know We've not got to those details yet within this case. Maybe we will do eventually. So for him not to take his trailer, is that similar to like Chase Venstra, how he left his trailer and trailers behind? Hmm? Like there's been talks about Dylan Rounds, he would take his trailers if he was moving elsewhere and doing other stuff in between, aside from his farming. If Dylan could do it, then why didn't Don, right? Or does Don have a new accommodation, that's all I can think of. Though, he must have taken one of his vehicles, like, he supposedly had a Harley Davidson motorcycle, motorbike, okay? He looks like the type of biker guy, and it has been described as him being a biker in the past by the likes of Zav Girl, by the likes of Julie, who's missing in action for several months now on YouTube. Well, regarding Dylan Brown's case. Um, so yeah, I can imagine him being a biker. Yeah, taking his bike with him because it's his. But did Don Haitley have any other vehicles? Did he have a truck, a car, um, a van, any of that? Does anyone know, aside from the motorbike? The only reason why I say that is if he, if he took his motorcycle, motorbike, but he also had a truck, a vehicle. How did that work? Did he have one of those open top trucks where basically you strapped the motorbike in the back so you stop it from moving so then you can transport both and take both to wherever, right? Or if you had a trailer, you could put the bike on the trailer too, can't you? Um, but all I saw at the time was his um, RV present and that was it. I wonder if his RV has anything inside. Well, we can get more into that another time, right? I'm surprised no one's explored, gone inside of it. Why not? You know, if people have looked elsewhere. Even if they've been advised not to, then why not them as well? So, you get the picture. Can we accept that? There you go. So, you see that yellow line start to finish from Lucent to Oakley. 
all within Utah, okay? 215 miles, roughly. Now, there's other routes to go, but I don't know if they're any shorter or longer. But this one, I wouldn't be surprised if we took. And the only other reason why I say that is because after that spring cleaning, June 2nd, Candice Cooley did say that Don and Jim drove down to Wendover, which is down here south. So maybe with this knowledge of this route, maybe it's the same route Don took. You know what I'm saying? To get into Salt Lake City and eventually to Oakley, as you see on screen. Now, what I want to do, I don't think it will let me. There we go. Flip the image. You see Oakley. You can see the, like, the mountains, how it's very bumpy and everything. Can you see? Very hilly mountains, right? Go to Salt Lake City where it's more urban. And we zoom in and you can see all the mountains, Twin Peaks, Provo Peak, surrounded by them, right? Okay. I look at all the houses as well, 3D models, every single one, that's crazy. And you got the mound there. Right, I don't want to get too distracted, so. Now, Oakley is over past those mountains, so you can't actually see it from here if you was in Salt Lake, right? Just zoom out. Yeah. There we go. See, it can get a little bit confusing when uh, you can't quite see it. There we go, here's Oakley. So we've done a distance check already, okay? Whether it was a one-way trip or back and forth to retrieve retrieve items of, uh, of Don's, maybe. That's uh, unconfirmed. His vehicle's been taken from the looks of it, obviously. What, uh, was it um, an overnight journey? Did it take multiple days? I'm not sure. But a fair bit of distance covered. Now let's take a brief look at some overall photos of Oakley. One out of 20. Now, I'll do some quick ones on the spot. Do you know, as for the voices, <laughs> what voices? Unrelated to Dylan Rouse, but I just wanted to showcase some of the the, the voices. I'll I'll do the one of the worst ones first. How do you do the Joker? Right, which Joker? The Heath Ledger one. Um, the, like, not well. Do you call it the original? Well, no, the original Joker is way back in the past. But yeah, Heath Ledger, the Joker. Bit bit of a high pitch American. You want to see where these scars are come from? I don't know. I sound like I'm doing some kind of higher pitch Captain Jack Sparrow with an American accent. You know, like how to start sounding very similar. If I say, where, where, where's the ram? Where's the ram? My dog stepped on a bee. It, it kind of goes off a bit. So if I try doing the joke a higher pitch, it sounds like, where's, where's the ram? Would you like to see these scars on my face? It doesn't sound like it to me. It's one of those things where when you do the voices, you know, um, half the time it doesn't sound like the person, but when I've recorded my voice and I play it back, sometimes it does sound as it should, right? For the most part of it, I've mastered the accents of different countries, as some of you have heard, but for direct impersonations of an actual person or character, that's where it becomes a little bit more difficult, right? So I'll try the Joker, you know, it's like literally on the spot. I've not practiced it, okay? So to some people it may seem like, well, no surprise because it's shit, okay? Let me just get some water. Agua mineral, okay? And like what lines do I come out with? I am the Joker, yes? You want to see these scars? What I have, okay. And these scars, they've been caused deep internally. Why do I sound like some fucking teen wolf American teenager? What the hell? Is, is there a bit of a, uh, uh, like a, uh, someone said you got to do a Morgan Freeman, but a high pitch one. 
How do you do, Morgan Freeman? Why do I sound like Snape from Potter? This is what I mean, yeah. Everything ends up sounding the same. It's either very good or it's very bad. And at the moment, it's very bad. Uh, I might as well just go and say, Where's Paul Allen at? Where's Paul Allen? This, this ain't working. This ain't working. No. Hmm. You want to see these scars? You want to see these... I'm starting to say, like, um, what does it say? Want to play a little game? It's sore. Okay. No more calibrating of my voice. I'm just going to do it on the on the spot. And uh, Cleo can tell me whether it's close enough or not. So, you want to see these scars? These scars tell a long story. <laughs> The scars within were caused by an individual named Cleo. Her bleached skills were out of this world. The thing is with Cleo, Cleo's blade is a butterfly knife. It spreads wide open. It spreads more open than anyone else. So when the blade was played, it slipped the inside of my face, leaving a scar, a reminder of dear Cleo. I'm always reminded of her because of this smile imprinted on my face. Mm, you want to play a little game? Here's a mystery surprise. It will go boom. So there you go. That's my attempt at the Joker. What about something else? I can try Bane. Um, I just need to try and... Um, let me just put the tripod down because it requires my hands for this one. Well, probably not, but just to get the distortion effect, okay? You ready? Oh, young Batman. I wondered when you would arrive. You know, I am Bane. Nobody knew who I was until I put on the mask. But it's not just the mask, it's the muscle. The muscle runs deep in my veins, meaning I am eternally strong. And because I'm strong, I can break bones. Oh, Batman. I do wish you thinked before whipping your batarang around magic. <sighs> Why am I taking a deep breath? It sounds like Darth Vader. Well, it's because I am your daddy. Please kneel before me. You have no idea what I am capable of. You understand, Batman. Hmm? I do hope you are ready for this, because they will not be repeating it again. Oh, Cleo, do you approve of Bane? Do you like Bane, Cleo? Cleo? Hmm? Would you want to see Bane's biceps? They are rather large, much bigger than Raph. That's a fact. <sighs> Will that one do? I can do it without my hands. I can still do the distortion. It's quite it's not exactly the same, but you can follow the same one. I'll just do it quick. Mm, my name is Bert, Mr. Batman. You appears you are messing with the wrong individual. Okay. So there you go. Hmm. I'm tired now. <sighs> okay. So let's just take a slide show of these photos of Oakley, Utah. Okay. So it will be random photos by tourist visitors, people that live in the area and then just uploaded it. I just wanted to share with you an introduction to the place, you know? 
And the most important part is we don't go too deep into the location to begin with, though we can follow it up further down the line depending if or when people step in with comments to reinforce points that Don is in this location or was at some point or maybe someone else. You get what I'm saying? If we rush in really deep and then it turns out it's not true, it's like, oh, a lot of resource and time was wasted. So we go so far, you know, tickle the tip and then proceed onwards from there. What's this? Rhode, Rhode Island Diner. Isn't Rhode Island a place in America? Or is this just something else? Mm. Established 1939. Okay. Got like a little nature walk from the looks of it. As you can see, more dense the vegetation here compared to Lucin. So I guess if if there's some kind of farms as well present, they might benefit better here than Lucent. Not as harsh. Um, I, don't know, I don't know about the overall temperatures. Um, but yeah, it makes sense. A place like this, you know, sometimes if you're trying to predict where a individual has gone, sometimes you can base the characteristics of the environment to the personality of the individual. If the individual is a quiet person, they keep to themselves, they don't like being around others or many, they may choose a quiet location where they can be more at peace, where they're not reminded of what they don't have or can't do when surrounded by other people. So the karma, okay, they might even incorporate nature and um, wildlife and the visual aspect of it too. Now, obviously, the price and costing of stuff can also play a big role in where people end up. But, you know, the way it's been worded by Don Haightley, I think Candice Cooley, Justin both agreed that Don Haightley is now retired, but still is okay with money. Whereas someone like Brenner is just completely a slob and isn't working and doesn't have any extra money coming in, leading up to his arrest, of course, okay? So, yeah, Oakley seems like the type of place Don would go to, in a way. Okay, sure, there might still be people present, but not as many compared to a city or populated town. Okay. Um, once again, you still get snow within the area. Obviously, higher altitudes will receive it first hand. Just like with Bald Eagle Mountain, Pilot Peak, you saw the snow on there, but you saw Candy's Cooley taking a photo on ground level in Lucin, looking at the mountains in the distance, but there was no snow in Lucin, but there was on the mountains. That makes sense. Um, could you get stranded out there in Oakley, Utah? Maybe, in some ways. Um, oh, no, I've just realised. Glitter Galaxy, you are getting around a lot, girl. One minute you're taking photos of a night out and the camera is so shaky that you forgot to turn the flash on and you panicked. Well, I'm sorry. Learn how to use your phone, girl. And speaking of which, learn when to put things away. I know you had a bit of an attitude when it came to moving tables and chairs. <coughs> Correction, miniature doll tables and chairs inside of your motel and many of us out there but please when you're finished can you return your ice pick to new york please yeah i know exactly this is your ice scraper glitter galaxy don't even deny it don't even try that with me mm -mm, ain't gonna work okay good now take it back so yeah you see the snow it's quite thick now, I don't know, is this like a really old photo or an edited one with a filter on? This is by Saladumanamuwawaw, how you say their name. I mean, it looks like an old photo. It looks very grainy. But as you know, you can take photos and make it look older than it seems. You can even make it black and white, such as on Instagram with all the filters. So, hmm, I'd say it's somewhat old, but not too old. Oh my god, there's a little rainbow in the background, Cleo. There's another rainbow. Yeah, is the rainbow representing your smile? 
It's very wide. Mm. Keep on smiling. Anyway. <coughs> My God, that dog has seen some days. Have you seen its eyes? In the name of Jesus, are you high? Have you been in the magical garden of Glitter Galaxy? You look like you have seen a lot. You know, you know, oh my God. <laughs> you know what? No, scrap that. Uh, Glitter Galaxy's magical garden is on a level high above everyone else, literally speaking. But don't worry, forget the neighbors. The neighbors might be desperate. They might come rummaging in like a Viking. Uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, oh, fuck me. You got, yeah. Harder, man. Okay. Just for if I do that, punish myself, it will um, make me stop spazzing out. So, regarding that dog and the dog's face, he looks traumatised. Do you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this dog was scouring the streets when the dog turned his head, looked up at a light in a window, and there's Indiana brushing away with a feather duster, pressed up against a window, all on display. You know, this dog is hypnotised by Indiana. Wow. Will he ever be the same again? I don't know. Do we have any dog counsellors in the area? He may need to see some kind of therapy. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah? I mean, there's another dog back there, but he's completely looking away, so he must just be okay. So... Uh, get well soon, dog. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, we got this one again. Rhode Island Diner. Mm-hmm. Okay, one of those type of ones. Um, we've got some more nature shots. Black and white this time. And you can see, once again, very dense. It's like woodland, in a sense. Yeah. There you go. There's some more. Are these, like, cabins? Or actual accommodation. I don't know because it's in the middle of a forest. Looks like you've got a building, a house over there, some kind of lodge. I don't know if it's um, like a vacation lodge, an air, B and B. Is Glitter Galaxy's eyes lighting up? B and B. I don't know. Or is it just an actual homestead? If any of you know, feel free to let me know. I do remember that in the past with uh, Mosaic Michelle, the missing person from uh, online, if you remember, Mosaic Michelle said, well, she actually showed a photo that her back garden led into the woodlands. So it was kind of good and you could just walk on into the woodlands. I mean, it's one of those things where it's kind of interesting, but it's also kind of spooky. You know, you don't know how far it goes or what could come out of it into your back garden. So, yeah, you can see the um, the height up there, it gets pretty high, yeah. Okay, there's another dodgy shot. It's like this person's like, oh my God, <laughs> I should have knew it from the start. <laughs> I should have knew it from the start. You remember all those Bigfoot documentaries where the camera angle is half hanging out the side of a tree? where it shows Bigfoot sticking his head around the side and then disappears again. Yeah, this is the point of view from Bigfoot himself. He's just lurking behind trees and uh, hard wood. You know, when he wakes up, it doesn't matter. He goes to sleep. It's the same thing. There's hard wood everywhere. And he's just, just, just scraping it all over. He's hiding behind it, sticking his head out. Yeah. You don't even hide yourself, man. Who's this? K-Mac? Yeah, whatever, man. It's Bigfoot. Sasquatch! Okay. So this does look like one of those homesteads. I mean, it looks like one of those custom homes, what you have built. I remember on YouTube, there was a YouTube channel that where a presenter would go around to these custom-built homes, smaller-scale ones, you know, designed by the actual homeowner. And... One that was shown was like a very small, narrow, custom-built house. And the guy that built it for his girlfriend, people made the joke saying in, in the video that uh, they were saying to the guy, blink twice if you need rescuing, blink once if you're safe, 
blink four times or something if you're in danger. <laughs> and it's just his facial expression throughout the video. People were making conspiracy theories saying that he was controlled by her and he was forced to make that home for her and not for him so she would stay with him. It got very wild, all kinds of stuff. And I just remember it. It just looks like it. Now, um, I don't remember the name of the channel. I don't remember the name of the video. But I think the... Uh, oh, Dave, did the person have blonde hair? Oh, I don't know. But maybe some of you know and remember it, right? It just remind me because of the way it looks visually. Looks like you've got a white tank down there as well. Hmm. Not bad. Then you've got a diner inside. Oh, my God. Is this like a little tour? Maybe... Maybe we'll get a bigger one. What's this up there? Oakley City Business. Warlike Raph, hottest individual of the year. Oh, sorry, I misread that. It's to do with the diner. Hottest food of the day. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. What am I thinking? Oh my God, is that it of the photos? Wow. No, it's not. Okay, so we've got another dirt road. Looks like they're driving on the spot. Oh, you got like a... Oh, no, what does that say? Terry? Oh, my God, Jim Terry! What are you doing over there, man? Jim Terry, what are you up to, man? Sound like a cartoon character, then. Huh, interesting. But you can see it's kind of... It's pretty quiet. So this definitely would suit someone like Don. And then you look at this landscape. Yeah, it would work for him. I don't know if he prefers dry desert vastness or dense woodland, but either way, it's quiet. Not too many people getting in the way. As for farms, doesn't seem like there's too many within this area due to, you know, the actual terrain. What is interesting, though, is why you get all these trees? Why is that patch quite bare? Is that down to deforestation or is it just natural? Hmm. So, number five. Could Bigfoot Sasquatch be hiding, lurking in the woodland? Will we ever find out? Well, join me next time as we go deeper and find the real truth. You never know what's round the corner. Maybe the next time you wake up, you feel something hairy in bed. I wonder what that could be. Well, turn around and you may see Bigfoot staring right into your eyes. Then up to you to decide what happens next. That's if you survive. Hmm. You can actually make out the houses down there, which is interesting. So it is interesting that how these houses are deep within the woodland, right? Obviously, trees have been cut down so the houses could be built there, but the way they're encased by all the trees. Hmm. Yeah. Away from uh, the main road over there from the looks of it. Okay. There's another shot. These photos are most likely taken by the people that live here, most likely. Probably using the drone, yeah. Mm. Let me know, is there any Bigfoot sightings in Oakley? Have any of you been to Oakley? Have any of you heard of Oakley? Let me know. Yeah, repeat. Okay. Yeah, just more vegetation, nature shots. Hey, could I have some service? Hey, I'm over here. Can you not hear me? No? No? Okay, I'm going to see your manager. What? You're the manager? Oh my god, why are you playing some Uno reverse card on me? That's not how it's supposed to work. I'm the one in charge. I'm the one that has the power. I'm the one that gets what I want when I want because I'm such a needy person. I'm more needy than needing dough. Yeah, not the money, but the dough you make to make fucking bread or whatever. Not like the... No, not like the... Uh... Yeah! Why do I keep spazzing out with these weird voices? Um, what was... Right, I'm going to do it quickly because I forgot to do it. Let's just move on to a different photo. So it's not awkward. No, we've got no more photos. Fuck me. Fuck me. Okay. I'll just do one more voice because um, I said I was going to do it. The, uh, the, was it like Japanese anime voice? Okay. I'll try it now. Okay. Here we go. Oh, 
You think that's good? Would that do? Oh, ni hao, senpai. Konnichiwa. Wow. So, yeah. There you go. Let me know what you think of that. Hmm? I don't know if I could do it in English. Um, I'll try quickly. Some dodgy one there. Okay, we'll leave it there before I strain my voice. Okay, so for the first introduction into looking deep into another suspect for once, such as Don Haitley, I think that was somewhat successful today, right? Tying it all together, reinforcing certain points. Some people may be confused to why I bring up previous things that has been mentioned already. Well, it's just it's all stitched together. It's the process, if you haven't heard already of using like a scalpel, tearing it apart, then collecting it all together and reattaching it. Okay, so we got the flow, we've got the consistency, we can back it up with evidence or information, reinforce it, okay? And obviously, although repetition to some people may seem boring, repetition is consistency. Consistency is a bit more valid and you can take it more serious. I mean, it's breath of fresh air compared to all the switching and changing of other information, right? So you put that aside, What what's the only thing that doesn't quite make sense? My hair at the moment, it looks like someone's been, you know, pulling out. Like, oh my God, daddy, you know, fucking pull my hair, daddy, pull my hair so much. Oh my God, you're so skilled at that. Yeah, you're going to pull it, you're going to pull it harder. You're going to give it a tug. You don't touch my hair unless I ask you to. Okay. So thanks for watching, appreciate it. Leave your thoughts down below. If you have any additional information regarding Don Haley or locations or CCTV footage, whatever it may be, feel free to list it down below. We are not finished yet with Oakley, Utah. If there are more reinforcing points, we'll take a look closer at um, Oakley and do street view. And if there is no update or much talk about it, no one debunking it, then I'll still look at it, okay? So that, that will be under control. So, yes, thanks for watching. See you next time, whenever that is. Good night and goodbye for now.